Thank you so much, Chairman. I have a commitment in another committee. So we know what that's like. Appreciate you taking me out of turn. Um, I think it's really indisputable right now that we will overrun our climate safety barriers, um, particularly at 1.5 degrees. And because of that, we must be able to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. Once you're out of the safety zone, going to zero emissions doesn't help you any longer. You actually have to claw back the excess legacy carbon dioxide to get to safety. And that to me is just a given as we forge a pathway to safety here. Um, this is a pretty well-established technology. I think the Boundary Dam project in Saskatchewan kicked off in 2014 and proved the viability of carbon removal. Of course, they use it for enhanced oil recovery, which to me is a very disfavored use because it plugs carbon back into the system after having removed it. Um, and I think direct air capture, uh, as the witnesses have, have mentioned, is absolutely essential because, you, again, you don't get to a positive outcome if all you're doing is stripping carbon dioxide out of carbon-emitting smokestacks. So direct air capture has to be a absolute priority uh, in this work. And I think in that framework, we've done some good preliminary efforts here in the Senate that are good bipartisan preliminary efforts here in the Senate uh, to solve the fundamental problem of this industry, which is that it lacks revenue. It is really hard to get innovation happening if there's no reward for the innovation, if there's no revenue proposition at the end of the day for the people who invest in, design, and build uh, these plants. So we've done that through 45Q. We've done that using public tax deductions as the revenue source, but obviously that's limited to the scope of the program. I hope to see it continue to grow, but at the end of the day, it's still going to be a limited program compared to having the market operate the way it should. I also have a CDR bill with Senator Coons that I hope will uh, be able to move pretty quickly where the United States government comes in in its proprietary capacity as a buyer of uh, carbon. So um, those are two ways by making the U.S. a customer and by providing tax benefits that we can begin to establish at least the framework for a revenue proposition that gets us through some of the early stage incubator moments that this industry needs. But at the end of the day, the real solution has to be carbon pricing. Without that, you take away from the market the market signal. And um, I think that if you connect a carbon price to a carbon border adjustment, what you end up seeing is huge net value for the American economy. Because the carbon border adjustment, even if we do nothing and just pay the tariff, let's say to the EU and CBAM comes, let's just say we're, we're losers and we don't keep up and we just pay the tariff. On balance, we're still winners. Because although we lose in the tariff exchange with the EU, we gain an enormous amount because the EU is also tariffing China. It's also tariffing India. It's tariffing other countries where manufacturing takes place, and it's creating a price differential that will cause a move of manufacturing to the United States. And that is a win for the American economy. So at the end of the day, if we don't get carbon pricing and carbon border adjustment done, we are just whistling. Um, we like to talk big on innovation here, but you can't do innovation while stifling the policies that give innovation its oxygen, which is a revenue proposition. So if I could ask in the seconds remaining, um, um, Mr. Alberton uh, or Mr. Townsend, to say a word on the importance of having a robust, lasting market revenue proposition to support this industry. And because my time will run out, maybe if we do that as a um, question for the record to all the witnesses, if you'd like to comment on what I have said, I would appreciate it. And that answer in writing will go into the record of this hearing, and that way I won't have to hold up my colleagues any longer. Would that be all right? Yes. Happy to do that. Great. Much appreciated. Thanks for being here. We have a big bipartisan opportunity and um, look forward to taking advantage of it. This committee can forge compromises that will make a big difference.